The dam's purpose directly influences the time for design and construction, the choice and quality of materials, the foundation treatment and the hydraulic considerations of dams. Most of the dams are single-purpose dams, but there is now a growing number of multipurpose dams. Using the most recent publication of the World Register of Dams, irrigation is by far the most common purpose of dams. Among the single-purpose dams, 48% are for irrigation, 17% for hydroelectricity, 13% for water supply, 10% for flood control, 5% for recreation and less than 1% for navigation and fish farming. Hello and welcome to Engineering Concepts, today we will discuss about purpose of dams. Although it is less common on small projects than on large developments, dams are often constructed to serve more than one purpose. Where multiple purposes are involved, a reservoir allocation is usually made to each distinct use. A common multipurpose project combines storage, flood control, hydropower and recreational uses. Irrigation Presently, irrigated land covers about 277 million hectares i.e. about 18% of world's arable land but is responsible for around 40% of crop output and employs nearly 30% of population spread over rural areas. With the large population growth expected for the next decades, irrigation must be expanded to increase the food capacity production. It is estimated that 80% of additional food production by the year 2025 will need to come from irrigated land. Even with the widespread measures to conserve water by improvements in irrigation technology, the construction of more reservoir projects will be required. Dams are often used to control and stabilize water flow, often for agricultural purposes and irrigation. Others such as the Berg Strait Dam can help to stabilize or restore the water levels of inland lakes and seas, in this case, the Aral Sea. Hydropower Hydroelectric power plants generally range in size from several hundred kilowatts to several hundred megawatts, but a few enormous plants have capacities near 22,000 megawatts in order to supply electricity to millions of people. As of 2022, World hydroelectric power plants have a combined capacity of 1360 gigawatts that produces over 4.2 trillion kilowatt hours of electricity each year, supplying 16% of the world's electricity. In many countries, hydroelectric power provides nearly all of the electrical power. In 1998, the hydroelectric plants of Norway and the Democratic Republic of the Congo provided 99% of each country's power and hydroelectric plants in Brazil provided 91% of total used electricity. Electricity generated from dams is by very far the largest renewable energy source in the world. More than 90% of the world's renewable electricity comes from dams. Hydropower also offers unique possibilities to manage the power network by its ability to quickly respond to peak demands. Pumping storage plants, using power produced during the night while the demand is low, is used to pump water up to the higher reservoir. That water is then used during the peak demand period to produce electricity. This system today constitutes the only economic mass storage available for electricity. Hydroelectric power is a major source of electricity in the world. Many countries have rivers with adequate water flow that can be dammed for power generation purposes. For example, the Itapu Dam on the Parana River in South America generates 14 gigawatt and supplied 93% of the energy consumed by Paraguay and 20% of that consumed by Brazil till end of 2005. Water supply for domestic and industrial use. It has been stressed how essential water is for our civilization. It is important to remember that of the total rainfall falling on the earth, most falls on the sea and a large portion of that which falls on earth ends up as runoff. Only 2% of the total is infiltrated to replenish the groundwater. Properly planned, designed and constructed and maintained dams to store water contribute significantly toward fulfilling our water supply requirements. To accommodate the variations in the hydrologic cycle, dams and reservoirs are needed to store water and then provide more consistent supplies during shortages. 
A reservoir can be created by building a dam across a valley, or by using natural or man-made depressions. The main parameters of the reservoir are the volume, the area inundated and the range that the water level can fluctuate. The basic function of an artificial reservoir is to change the rate of flow in the stream or to store water for more expedient use. Reservoirs are among the more useful means of controlling the natural character of water flows, instead of depending on nature. Many urban areas of the world are supplied with water taken from rivers pent up behind low dams or weirs. Examples include London, with water from the River Thames, and Chester, with water taken from the River Dee. Other major sources include deep upland reservoirs contained by high dams across deep valleys, such as the Clarence series of dams and reservoirs. Inland navigation. Natural river conditions, such as changes in the flow rate and river level, ice and changing river channels due to erosion and sedimentation, create major problems and obstacles for inland navigation. The advantages of inland navigation, however, when compared with highway and rail are the large load carrying capacity of each barge, the ability to handle cargo with large dimensions and fuel savings. Enhanced inland navigation is a result of comprehensive basin planning and development utilizing dams, locks, and reservoirs which are regulated to provide a vital role in realizing regional and national economic benefits. In addition to the economic benefits, a river that has been developed with dams and reservoirs for navigation may also provide additional benefits of flood control, reduced erosion, stabilized groundwater levels throughout the system and recreation. Dams create deep reservoirs and can also vary the flow of water downstream. This can in return affect upstream and downstream navigation by altering the river's depth. Deeper water increases or creates freedom of movement for water vessels. Large dams can serve this purpose, but most often weirs and locks are used. Flood control Dams and reservoirs can be effectively used to regulate river levels and flooding downstream of the dam by temporarily storing the flood volume and releasing it later. The most effective method of flood control is accomplished by an integrated water management plan for regulating the storage and discharges of each of the main dams located in a river basin. Each dam is operated by a specific water control plan for routing floods through the basin without damage. This means lowering of the reservoir level to create more storage before the rainy season. This strategy eliminates flooding. The number of dams and their water control management plans are established by comprehensive planning for economic development and with public involvement. Flood control is a significant purpose for many of the existing dams and continues as a main purpose for some of the major dams of the world currently under construction. The Keenly Side Dam on the Columbia River, Canada can store 8.76 cubic kilometers, 2.10 cu me, of floodwater, and the Delta Works protects the Netherlands from coastal flooding. Land Reclamation Dams often called dikes or levees in this context, are used to prevent ingress of water to an area that would otherwise be submerged, allowing its reclamation for human use. Water Diversion A typically small dam used to divert water for irrigation, power generation, or other uses, with usually no other function. Occasionally, they are used to divert water to another drainage or reservoir to increase flow there and improve water use in that particular area. Thanks for watching and let us know what do you think.